decide how much money to take out of your business to live on or buy a car or do whatever you want to do versus saving all of it and plowing it back into your business? Is there some ratio you're paying attention to? or Because like you really could indefinitely do that, like never take money out because you can always justify needing more cash to buy more properties. But like, where do you draw the line? So I didn't pay myself anything until I started in Q4 of last year. So I started paying myself like six months ago. I rolled everything back into the business, every single penny, just rolled it back into the business so that it could keep growing and growing and growing. And it has, it's worked really well. Now I usually, I, I don't like have a set payment for myself. I take enough to live off of obviously, but then in, now anytime we have like a big cash sale or something like that, I'll take X percent off that. That varies based on, you know, my personal expenses. Do I have something coming up I need money for? Do I not? If I don't need any, if I have enough to live on for whatever I'm doing at that moment in time, then I'll just roll it back into the business. I, th I think it compounds a lot quicker, right? Because that's like, I don't take loans. I don't, I finance all the stuff myself. So it's a lot easier to grow if I have more money in the business. You uh, went full time in 2019, right? So how were you getting money from then until six months ago when you started paying yourself? I had a bunch of savings myself and I've got a rental house um, that I rent out that gives me good good income every every month so gotcha had a, have a few different things going maybe we can segue into that topic so when did you decide okay I can quit my job I can do this full time like what did it take for you to be comfortable doing that honestly I was ready to, I'll, I proved the concept that first so end of 2016 I was still kind of well, I was very new, but I'd proved the concept. And then end of 2017, we'll say the first full year that I was actually mailing a lot, a lot. It was like a thousand a month. It wasn't very many. I had made nearly three times what I was getting paid at my corporate job. So I was ready to bounce that time. That was end of 2017, but just wanted to keep doing it on the side for a while and had some good things going at the corporate job and could do it nights and could do land nights and weekends and held out two more years and then and then it was the concept was really proven <laughs> and uh i mean at that point that was what three seventeen eighteen nineteen two three three years in yeah three years in so it was it was a no-brainer at that point i was i was costing myself money to to not be full-time i did a very similar thing where like i could have quit a lot sooner than i did but for me anyway, I can't speak for you, but for me, I, I think I was like scared. Like, what if this stops working? What if there's a dry spell or what if, I don't know, something goes wrong. And even though the job was making a lot less, it just, for some weird reason, it felt more secure when it was honestly costing me a lot. It was a huge bottleneck keeping me from doing a lot of stuff that I could have made a lot more money from. Um, it just took me forever to finally get comfortable enough to make the leap. Yeah. Was that a similar thing for you where it was like a security blanket or was it, was there another reason like benefits or trying to save up more cash for when I do pull the plug or something like that? Yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew the, what I wanted to do, like I wanted to take this full time, but I didn't want to do it too soon. And yeah, I, since I was reinvesting everything into the business and continued to do that for a while, I wanted to save up, you know, the cash to, to live on for a while before I'd have to start paying myself. I guess I've never been scared on like the, the downtime, like if this ever stops working, cause it's always worked. Like everything sells, everything always sells. Um, and if not, you can do something else with it. Like kind of a lot of your podcasts and stuff talked about Airbnbs and nightly rentals and tip camp. I mean, you could do so many things with these properties, storage units, billboards, whatever. So I think if something's not selling, you're just not looking at it from the correct way, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, instead of just trying to sell the land, what else can you do for it? Or if you're not offering seller financing, offer it. Because <laughs> that opens up your buyer pool to a lot more people.